Welcome to another episode of the Information Addicts Podcast. My name is Cassidy. I'm an information addict, and this is my podcast where I explore information, ideas, and beliefs and try to do those things more responsibly. Today's conversation is with my friend Andrea with the bangs. Andrea is a great friend. I met her on the Discord and through these little circles and in fact have even been able to hang out with her several times in person. Uh, she recently decided to move her channel more towards uh, filmmaking and understanding feminine in film. So I asked her to come on and have a conversation with me about that. And uh, I think it went really well. So I hope you enjoy it. Andrea, lovely to have you back for another conversation. It's lovely to be back, Cassidy. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for having me. Of course. Always lovely talking to you. Um, uh, before we jump in, I know you've been on our channel before. You are a pretty well-known face in this little corner, but why don't you just give a little bit of background who you are? I know I'm really stoking your ego <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Actually, a friend of mine said she was uh, falling down a, a Jordan Peterson rabbit hole the other day. And, um, and again, so this was secondhand. So this is a friend telling me of the other mutual friend. And so this friend was like, oh, I can't remember who it was, but then you came on as a guest. And I was like, oh, I, well, who was it? Cause I've only guested for so many. So like, it could only be a handful, but it'd be fun to know who. So that was a nice surprise in like the wild, I guess, where it's yeah. like real life where it's like, oh, well, it came up. Sometimes it's a nice surprise. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, how, oh, do I, I suppose. how do I explain this? <laughs> right. How do I explain oh, what is, I do okay. on the internet? <laughs> yeah, this instance was was nice, but you're right. It could be like, Ooh, what am I doing? Um, okay, so right, you asked me a question. Um, so my channel, is that what you Or just you. Who are you? What are you about? Okay, so, you can certainly plug your channel. Right. I know I'm like, oh, like find opportunities to plug myself because <laughs> I'm very bad at doing it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So how I came on the scene was like listening to Jordan Peterson, listening to those kind of people in that space four years ago. I think it was four years ago. Can't believe that. That's gone by quickly. Yeah. Um, but I, I started off doing this because I just thought it would be something that would be like I wanted to be part of it like I wanted to be part rather than watching I wanted to participate mm -hmm. um there's a way to put it and so and it and I started off in one place for reasons that kind of shifted over to more meaningful reasons and then that um and like it was also me exploring like understanding myself and, you know, mm -hmm. you go from wave to wave of what, what, how you understand yourself to be and you sort of can go, oh, I actually think I get that bit of me and, and I'm able to move on or explain to others. So that's where I am for this. So I tackle narrative and the feminine the most in my channel. And so that's led me to doing sort of like film and television deep dives um, but they're short deep dives, like five minutes. Like I, I've really changed how I do my channel. I, yeah. I do interviews still, but they're more to do with film or story or narrative, you know, that yeah. sort of thing or the feminine, but most of the, or symbolism, anything to do with, with stories, you know, I can, mm -hmm. I can like be like, oh, this will fit. Andrew, you, know? you can do whatever you want with your channel. I can do whatever that's I want, a, but I want to have, <laughs> I want to have some boundaries. I know, sure. I know. It's helpful but to want, have yeah. the boundaries. I, I'm with you. <laughs> Otherwise it's like, wait, I thought this was your channel and this, and that, yeah. So anyway, so it, it's helpful for me to sort of focus. So I do the interviews still, but not as often. And I now do where I just, they're really edited. I do a script and I read that into the mic. And then I add um, just, just, bits of what I'm talking about um, in like the film that I'm talking about or films of the genre and the type of thing I'm talking about. I basically just stole the what the critical drinker does and I, I do it. I do that, but way shorter. You're the female critical drinker. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not as harsh, <laughs> but I do, but that's what you do, right? When you, you see the people like, oh, this is how Paul does his and like, oh, this is how Drinker does his, you know, and then you kind of morph it into your own. So I've been, yeah, so that's what I've been doing on online for my um, channel. I am very slow. I used to put out so much more content, but 
I'm not a content creator. I, I, that's the truth. I, I've just accepted it. <laughs> I used to do every week when I was really pumped about like doing the podcast, but now I'm, I just, I, I'm more, I have to think about it and write the script and get all the like images and like clips and it just to, I just, I've, I've, I've given myself permission to do it once a month. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to do that stuff. You know, people and I have know three kids. Yes. Yeah, I have three kids and a husband and you know, a life and it's not COVID anymore. So I have less time. So yeah. that's it. Yeah, so that's the, that's the bit. And the feminine side, again, I kind of focus on, I mean, not only, but I, I particularly enjoy going into what's going on with women in film or the feminine being represented in film because you mm -hmm. can be on a heroine's journey. I found out from one of my guests talking about the heroine's journey. You can still be a male and a man and doing the heroine's journey. Mm. Um, but so those are the things I like to focus on more, um, but film in general. Um, and, and also uh, kind of a side note for, about me, I, I enjoy dressing in vintage clothing and a vintage style. So that's it. There you go. Me in a nutshell. <laughs> so why, why film? What about that? draws you and makes you interested in the feminine and those types of stories? So what I found I was doing, because, you know, when I was started doing this, I was watching a lot of interviews, long form interviews. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to do that. You know, that was like, I think I could do that. That's, that's what drew me. But, but as the years went on, I found myself watching film reviews a lot, mostly because there was a lot going on in film and, and you could, you could stick in some words, a lot going on for good or ill <laughs> in the film world. And it's, it's you know, what is it, the downstream, like uh, film and Hollywood or downstream of culture. So it's showing up. And I, I made that, I don't know if that's the proper saying. Mm -hmm. I know it's, that's a, that's a saying and I don't remember what the actual saying is, but it's, it is, it is something that you're, you know, the culture war stuff I was looking more in, into when I started, um, it's showing that, up more in and film. What, is the culture war piece where, is that what you were referring to at the beginning when you were saying I was initially drew, drawn to this thing in something yes. that was not so meaningful. And then over time it became meaningful. Yes. Yeah, so, so no offense to people who are like, I live and breathe for the culture war. Like, that's fine. I, and politics and such, and those are mixed into, I just actually found I don't like politics. I don't like, I don't enjoy engaging in the culture war anymore. Like I started off really partisan and very like, how dare you take away our free speech in these specific small areas that are not everywhere like that's the thing and i'm not against being concerned about where you live and the things happening i just found that i what drew me in and who, what i wanted to talk about moved away from that mm -hmm. and it moved and, and i was like hey what well, less meaning let's let's do because again jordan peterson has kind of these two sides at least before yeah. um <laughs> he his lectures about like meaning making that drew me in more his yeah. biblical lectures you know so yeah. those were the things I really was drawn to more than like compelled speech yeah. and so I went in that direction and that brought me through to narrative and um and I went to, and I didn't start off doing this from a Christian perspective even though yes I am a Christian um I that's a whole Thing. I, I stayed a Christian, but it was a very, it was, it was a tumultuous space for my spiritual life. Yeah. But I, I'm like, okay, so I don't want to just be like, oh, Jesus and God are the answers. Yay. And everyone <laughs> will, I didn't want to be the, you know, the Christian radio station. I didn't want to be the Christian podcast. So I wanted to just look okay, well, how do people bopping around? No, no affiliation with anything in particular. How do they find meaning? And so I started more on like the outside, at least who I was speaking to, you know, um, there was this guy, uh, he was a, I found him on Twitter. He, he's a very random, just post-grad, just finishing his dissertation. Mm -hmm. And he wrote an article called Orphans and Their Quests. 
And so, you know, I remember that one was the first, it wasn't the first I looked into narrative, um, but it was the first time I really deviated from the space of the known people in the culture war. Because some mm -hmm. people have a an affinity for um, narrative and, and story who are also in the culture war as well. But this was the first person who was like a really unknown. I didn't know who he was at all. And nobody really did. But I, I, and I just was like, oh, this, yes, this is what I want to pursue. And um, yeah, I really enjoy, I remember just, I really enjoyed that one interview. And then I just wanted to continue on. And then the feminine came up in that. And I was like, how do women do their hero's journey? Like, what does that look like? And like, what is that participation piece in, in story? And that was its own, you, it's sort of implicit. So you can't say it out loud, which is very difficult to convey <laughs> in a YouTube channel or a podcast. Like this is what, mm -hmm. um, and Jonathan Peugeot, I, I remember asking him about it and he was reticent to talk about it because he's like, I'm kind of ruining it by saying it out loud is the thing. And I'm like, what? I don't understand. And so that was the bit where I, I'm getting to the thing about you're Why good. movies? Okay, thank you. So doing the Discord, which is where I, I met you and we became friends. So we met through doing games mostly. Um, I know we met doing other things too, but that was the thing that we mostly That was the moment us. you realized I didn't hate you. <laughs> yes. No, I think that one. Yeah, no, it's because, no, the moment I realized you did was when, I, when you told me you liked the Lonely Island. <laughs> that was when I realized. It's also really hard to read people on video. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Cass? Yeah. So anyways, but um, but yeah, like we 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 can laugh about it now. Um <laughs> so so no, I I but the, there was knitting club and I wasn't even gonna try to learn to knit. I'm like, oh no, no, mm -mm, I can't do that. So I was like, okay, well, I have some mending projects, like a hole here, or like a seam that's opened here that I can just, so I joined with the intent to do that. But then the ladies were like, no, like, and they were like, they're, they're you know, like mom, type, my mom type age. So they're like, no, no, like, let, let us teach you. Like, we can, we can teach you, you can do it. And I was like, really? Okay, I'm scared to try new things and fail. Which is, you know, <laughs> it's a thing for me. And so they're like, no, no. Well, and again, it was hard. Like, they're literally like, okay, so turn it this way. Okay, so you're going to do the slip. No, it's hard. Oh, to it's got to be video. so hard. Yeah, over over video. <laughs> it was, but we did it. And they helped me get through it. And I did it. And I, I still can't start a piece by myself. Like, I'm still like, hey, Mara, can we talk? I want to start another blanket. Can you help me start it? And then I can go. I can do it. I know how to do it from there, but I still don't remember it because I only start, the starting is different from everything else. So anyways, all this to say, I was doing that and, and it's, it's, and then I started doing a, uh, uh, a class in my, um, in my church, ladies time out. And I sewed a skirt for myself and, and in the vintage community, it is a very big deal. Like you learn to sew because then you can pick out your own fabric. You can pick out your own like style of like whatever the item is. Cause in vintage, you, you, there's one item. Like you don't get to be like, oh, can I have that in a different color and a smaller size? No, like it's, if you're on Etsy, it's like, there's one of these it's uh, they're all rare finds. Like they're, yeah. it's all like, this is a rare find. Yes, thank you. I know it's vintage. So <laughs> thank you for telling me Etsy, but yeah. So, so that's something that I, these things, these, they're like the feminine arts, like, it's the textile arts with your hands with other women together it was something that you can't say out loud but you do and so that's how I fell into understanding the feminine in a way I hadn't By because you have to do it yes it's a mm -hmm. participation so and that's the thing that's interesting about all of this even how I worded how I got into all of this it's like I wanted to participate so in a, in a way, that's a feminine act that I wanted to do. I wanted to just, part, I wanted to participate in it. So right. I wanted to participate. And I guess participation isn't its own. You can be masculine and participate, but like it, 
the way I wanted to do that, it, the way I wanted to understand it, I, I had to participate in the things and in a new way. I was a novice and it had to be scary. Like it was like into the unknown of things that I was like, I'm not going to do well at this. And I'm very scared. I'm very like, I don't even want to do it if I can't do it well, you know? So that was something that I did that I, I help, I found that I could understand a little bit more about who I am as a woman participating in the feminine. And it helped me to sort of understand what's going, I can hear little footsteps. I don't know if they're coming. <laughs> it's just part of the feminine journey. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Interrupted <Hello>? by little footsteps. <laughs> it is. Hi. What's up? You can open the pocky. They're up. They're up in the cupboard. Okay, bye. Thank you. Yes, you may have two. <laughs> so I knew it. I might like, be I emergency. Said, oh. <laughs> I said, I said, I did I not predict it? Yes. <laughs> I know if it's an emergency or I'm hungry. Or no, it is an emergency because I'm hungry. <laughs> so so anyway, I, at least it was the oldest. He knew, he knows. He was like, Marco, tiny question. Is there anything else to eat? Yes. If it was my youngest, it would have been like way longer. So anyway, okay, so so where were we? Okay, so oh, so that was when I was like, okay, I think I'm going to, I think I understand enough to feel to to know what's going on in film. To so I okay. I wanted to do film stuff because I was noticing this, this, these things going on in the feminine and people like the reviewers, the film reviewers were as well. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I was looking for. If I was going to watch something on YouTube, that was not my regular stuff. Mm -hmm. It would be like, again, a critical drinker who was introduced to me through Paul Vanderclay. I just love that <laughs> this, this Scottish, I don't know, lad was introduced to me from, you know, online pastor Paul. Um, <laughs> but, but so, but, you know, it's sort of the rabbit hole when you click on the algorithm, it's like, oh, you like him, you'll I like these other people. So that was what I was looking for. And so that's something that I'm like, I want to make what I am watching. And mm -hmm. it's sort of coming into a space that is already where I'm going. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, so I'm understanding the feminine better. I'm, I'm seeing the feminine presented in film. And there is so much wrong because what I'm seeing in film is a man character hired with a with an actress hired to play him. Right. Like it's this uh I mean <laughs> there's certainly a lot of uh controversy around these sorts of things but like you look at like an ocean's 11 movie but with females like, right yeah yeah and, I, and captain marvel yeah she is the strongest avenger of them all and literally with physical strength it's like oh okay so i guess it like yeah emotional inner strength isn't enough it has to be literal like stronger than thor oh mm -hmm. Okay, so the, so but 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 the one caveat though, no flaws. Mm -hmm. She just needed to believe in herself. Where the masculine characters typically have flaws, and so I do want to caveat because I know that in Alien with Ridley um, Sigourney Weaver's character, technically that was written not necessarily for a man, but it was written. It didn't have to be a woman. They weren't thinking, uh, oh, this is going to be a woman playing. Mm -hmm. So that can be fine. So I'm not against yeah. that, but then flaws, you know, you've got flaws. So it, yeah. It, it's interesting because there's, there's a lot of this uproar of like, oh, why are we doing this? We're just replacing male roles with females and, you know, nobody wants to see that. Well, clearly some people want to see it because those movies are successful. <laughs> you know, they, they, they gain at, at least, you know, uh, to eyeballs. a point. To a point. To, to a, a point. point. It depends because what came out before Captain Marvel? Uh, uh, oh, Wonder shoot. Woman. And then, uh, well, there was lots of them. There yeah, I'm thinking of the Mar whatever Marvel one it was that came, so whatever was the literal one before Captain Marvel. Uh, which well, one? I, I think it might have <laughs> been. No, I, yeah, see, I saw, so, so 
like this is this matters i could look it up but people people you can like you, you can put in the comments um whichever 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 marvel film came out just before captain was marvel it an which I, one, though? it probably was an avenger one or i don't know i don't i'm not or it could have been marvel a spider-man person. one it was a very very successful one that came out just so you typically the marvel film that if a marvel film does really well it's typically because the one before it did really well mm -hmm. so captain marvel did fantastically but it's actually not because of the film it's because of the film before it mm -hmm. because people are like that yeah. was great let's go I, i'm sure they've duplicated it and it happened it did happen where oh no my my screensaver came up <laughs> um i'm sure that um i'm sure that the ones but there, there was a time where marvel film after marvel film after marvel film it didn't matter what the one was before because it did well and then that one did yeah. well and then that one would do well because they're all just like good but with captain marvel it was the this was the v1 where a whole bunch of youtube channels were born mm -hmm. <laughs> like actually like it was the one that i think that that was that along with like ray skywalker with the uh um the star wars those those trilogies mm -hmm. that she was the mary sue where it's just like i i fixed the random engine issue with no not much experience and you didn't even know that Harrison Ford how old are you sorry Han Solo anyway so like like she was sort of the precursor but then Captain Marvel it was like oh she has like zero flaws and it's literally everyone around her who is holding her back and she just mm -hmm. needs to believe in herself and that trend has just really upped everywhere and it's it's just the girl who's the key to everything and, and that's that's a trope i need to look into actually because i want to find out if it ever was good in the first place that's when i need to find someone to talk about mm -hmm. um that one about but but it's like it, it, dr strange too it was like the girl who's the key to everything and literally zombie benedict cumberbatch goes back in time oh, to oh yeah, just yeah. <laughs> tell her believe in yourself and that's it. That's all she had to do was believe in herself. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a trend. And so it's a it's a very feminine trend. Like they're they're having these, and it's usually to do it's it's usually like they, they've forgotten how to make a, a strong female character. And we did a really good job of it in the 90s and the 80s. Like you know, with um well Terminator, Terminator 2, especially. Um there's even this one movie that I didn't even know about with Gina Davis, Long Kiss Goodnight, her and Samuel L. Jackson. Have you heard of it? No. It's an action film and it's absolutely fantastic. She has, she loses her memory and she has a, a kid. She just, she woke up and had a baby. <laughs> and she, like, and the, the kid's like 11 or 10 mm. or maybe nine. I can't remember. I can't tell how old kids are sometimes. I'm, you know, but, but anyway, so she's like, we'll say nine. And, um, and she, it's just a really, really well done film. It's like, she lost her memory, but then she gets it back and she's not the same person. And she's a really like capable woman, but she's really vulnerable in the beginning. Cause she's like, mm -hmm. I don't know like what's happening and why these people are trying to attack me and whatever. But um, anyways, but she, yeah, it's, it was, it's great. And it's, it's like, we, you know, you can make a, you can make an action hero. That's a woman. That's an, that, that's who's vulnerable. Like that's mm -hmm. okay. And that's actually a strength. And like, it, it's just sort of like strength and weakness. Well, like, and that's I, actually what's missed. There's certainly, there's certainly uh, aspects of that in modern films. Like it, it exists, right? Like quiet place. It does. Oh no! It you're you're right. We can you can come up with the. I feel like, like there are, there are there are ones, but I understand the 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 pattern mm -hmm. you're seeing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I certainly have my the, own ideas of why. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why? Okay, you tell me why. Um, well, I think yeah, a, a lot of it has to do with feminism mm -hmm. and sort of the uh, the popularity of that. So this mm -hmm. idea of uh, you know women power wanting to because because you know you you see a superman film and you know uh i mean he's he has his one weakness kryptonite <laughs> but you know like that it you you see the man that's indestructible and people don't uh quite bristle at that as much 
as like a Captain Marvel, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like there's some a of that pattern. That's, it, there's, there's that vulnerability, I feel like, even in in good Superman, because it can, it can, can be done badly. <laughs> but I feel like it's like that sort of responsibility mm-hmm. that like the weight of it on the on his shoulders you know and, and and i mean captain marvel she just really seems like i don't want to be friends with her you know <laughs> well, like well, i want to be i yeah, want to be I, friends with superman i don't want to be friends with her um yeah i mean <laughs> it's, my man, it's hard it's hard to talk about that one because i i think i only saw it once you know i'm not a huge okay yeah super, sorry that, that, that one's no. that one's a, a random it's a, it's, no it's a great but, example and like i'm sure people who watch it can you know, connect with it, but, you know, I've never been yeah. big into the superhero films. Um, I mean, when I was younger and I, I watched them, they're, they're fun enough, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're interesting stories, but they're sort of, um, I don't know. They're well, the sort of, go it's ahead. It's the normie bread and butter. It's the normie <laughs> bread and butter. It is like, it, it, it's, it's actually the reason it's, it's really being superhero films are being talked about a lot right now because they're actually that that genre is dying mm. uh and so and, and that's what used to be a sure thing and um that's why it's kind of in the ether and so it's what i'm i'm thinking about a lot probably because it's sort of the like you know when a western would have been a sure thing in the 50s mm-hmm. it's sort of just this genre that like how can you go wrong and uh, but i mean okay i do want to be clear like Thing, like for me, the superhero genre sort of ended with like Endgame, like when they finished off that chapter yeah. for Marvel. It was like okay, that I'm, that was I'm very good. successful. It was because it was they the most took successful, their time. most yeah. successful film um, yeah. ever, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, anyway, but yeah, I I think that they're so that so so that one like that one like the superhero piece is more that's what the normie regular if you're going to go to a movie you it used to be oh I'll go to a superhero film like if you're just like a regular person but it it's it's sort of and I don't know what's going to take it its place actually like if mm-hmm. you look at the Oscars this past a uh, few weeks ago this past March I mean I didn't watch and I'm actually sad I didn't because because I, I was a little bit like I'm not going to watch because I know that everyone's like is something going to happen this year? And I'm like, I don't want to, I actually didn't even know how to watch. I don't have cable, but anyways, <laughs> but I, the but truth comes for, out. <laughs> I know it's actually, that's more than the truth. But I didn't look into trying to watch online or anything. So it, but uh, you look at everybody who won, at least in the major categories. And I was like, this is great. Like I loved everything everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fantastic. And it clicks all the quote unquote boxes, like the diversity boxes, and no one, from what I've heard, like no one is upset or like they're just pandering just because. Like no, this wasn't a. Well, there's some people. Like <laughs> oh, there are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, for, is. For, I guess. So. Okay. <laughs> but I well for I don't think that it was. It was a good film. I like the it. diversity higher. You know, I just I, I mean, really liked it. Listen, they were certainly. It certainly was. There was a that, multiverse. But that, Come on, sorry. It, I mean, it certainly was, but that in and of itself does not therefore mean it's a bad story, right? Just because you know, no, they no, purposely put I agree. in um, a certain type of uh, minority as a lead, or um, you know, you you're focusing on a gay character that that in and of itself doesn't tell you like you're just pandering to have a good story. There's something more that needs to go on to have those things. But the problem is there are so many films that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, it should be a happenstance of the that it happens the to be. Story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, yeah. So you can do those things. I, I, I guess I'm just mirroring what you said. Like it, 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 it is, you can have those things and the boxes can be quote unquote checked, but I'm not even thinking of boxes when I'm watching it. So that's how good it yeah, that, that, yeah. That's, a, that's a success that's a successful I, story yeah I think people can get jaded with some of the identity politics things b- because mm-hmm. of how much it feels like a manipulation or just like mm-hmm. a, a pandering to mm-hmm. um, avoid controversy or whatever and 
like, listen, I can understand the sentiment, but there's, there's something deeper going on underneath all of that, um, which I'm more interested in is how do we, how do we write good stories and how do we do that independent of the, the human that we're representing on the screen? Cause at the end of the day, we're all humans. Right. And so, um, there's a truth that, you know, um, well, I believe there's a truth that there is going to be a difference between a feminine story and a masculine story mm -hmm. in, in what comes from a person. But what is happening, I think, especially for females, and, and it's the same for white, a white story or a black story or whatever, right? Like I am not going to be able to fully understand and comprehend what it's like to live in an inner city and tell a story like that, that's going to be fully authentic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to attempt to write that story, um, right. even though like, you know, I might want to see it to understand the the fuller perspective of what it is to be human. Like I would still connect that even recognizing it's not, it's not a, a story. It's not that it's a story that I couldn't tell, but it's not a story that I feel capable or drawn to tell. Cause mm -hmm. like, I think there's this idea like, well, you know, you can't write for something you're not of. And well, that's not true. Look at uh, eighth grade by Bo Burnham. That film was fantastic. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, I need to see it. That film was fantastic. And mm -hmm. this 20-something-year-old uh, man is writing for a 13-year-old girl. He's mm -hmm. writing a story in the place of a 13-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. And he, he did it in a place where you got the vulnerability of what it is to be human. And like mm -hmm. he, it didn't feel, it didn't feel as though it was written by, you know, a man. And that's, mm -hmm. um, and like that's that that's something sort of interesting in the process mm -hmm. of it. But what I what I feel like there's a pressure of, especially for women in the the film space, because it's so masculine, we feel that we have to adapt to the masculine stories and the masculine form mm -hmm. to make it. Mm -hmm. And I think in doing so, we do, we're doing a disservice to what we can bring to the artistic field, and um, you can see it in a lot of different places. I think particularly when you look at uh, comedians and stand-up comedians, you see this more like more heightened because how many of the um, most successful female comedians um, write as if they they were men or like mm. follow these mm. these sort of masculine tropes of uh, or at least certain masculine tropes that were very popular. Um, in the 70s through the 90s of the uh, mm -hmm. sort of objectification of sexuality and yeah. expression of those things. Um, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to me, I feel like it's not, it's not the full story. And I'm sure there, for, for those women writing those stories, there is something authentic to their experience because the fact that they're being able to be successful in these fields means they probably have a lot of these masculine qualities, enough masculine qualities to make them stick it out. Mm -hmm. um, you can't, <laughs> you can't, if, if you're, if you don't have those things, um, mm -hmm. but like, how do you find that way to balance those things out with also the recognition of like the, the female story and the female forms and the way that we, we participate are very different. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and when I talk about feminism being more popular, I, you know, I don't want to be too much of a wide <laughs> brush and, and say, it's like a problem that's happening. Like, there are certainly good things that come from, um, feminism and the way that that has affected how we see men and women and the stories we tell. Yet, I think at some point down the line, and I don't know where feminism came from the recognition that men and women both have a place in the world and on the table. And like, even though we can operate in different ways and uh, orient ourselves in different forms, um, you know, there was that um, equality of humanhood <laughs> where mm -hmm. now it, it seems to be equality is we have the same stories and the same opportunities and we can do the same things men can do. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you see this particularly with uh, sexuality in films. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, uh, you talk about like voy voyeurism and the male gaze. And this used to be, or, or well, <laughs> this is a big part of film theory and 
um, the history of films and this idea of like the the camera uh, either criticizing or even sometimes heightening this male gaze where you put women in uh, sexy oh, clothes or yeah <laughs> yeah <I remember laughs> yeah. Well, well, but this was, this was like, even yeah, oh, way, way, way yeah. sooner. Yeah, yeah. But that, <laughs> yeah. That's the one that comes to mind when I'm imagining. That's, 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 yes, yes, way that's sooner. That's a great yeah. modern example of, right. Yeah. yeah you've yeah. got the girl in the crop top, tiny skirt, fixing the car. Like it's very mm-hmm. voyeuristic in the sense of like, yeah, there, there's a sexualization of women. And for a long time, feminism was against it where it's like, hey, women are not objects for your sexual pleasure. Like we're human beings <laughs> with, mm-hmm. with feelings and emotions and stories and we're much more than our bodies and um I think that's a good thing <laughs> it's like we shouldn't objectify anybody but what we're seeing now is we're seeing films like Magic Mike <laughs> where all of a sudden now it's celebrated that we put males in uh uncomfortable positions yeah, where they're stripping and yeah. it's 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 celebrated right or the you know you see the moms at the pool checking out the lifeguard right all of a sudden it's it's switched in the sense of like okay well if men can do it we can do it too and mm. um listen I, i'm not saying that women don't objectify men at times but shouldn't shouldn't the goal be hey we should not look to promote this for either gender instead of saying well, what's good for the game is good for the gander or whatever that phrase is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goose is good for the gander. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's that's where I've sort of um, kind of had a frustration with some of these tropes in film where it's all, all of a sudden these um, negative behaviors that were represented as heroic or glamorous that were um, perpetrated by men in stories. Um. Mm-hmm that that aren't actually <laughs> heroic or glamorous in the real world when you're talking about actual interactions with men and women are now getting glorified for females. And I don't mm-hmm. think it's making a better connection for what men and women actually are, what we actually want and how do we operate well with each other in the world. Yes, it's, it, I, I very much agree with, with what you're saying. And it, it's, there's a disconnect in understanding what sort of stories inspire it mm. seems like um yeah. and can explain like hitting those beats of that see i would really recommend like anyone who is interested in understanding the uh, heroine's journey like i i have this in i did this interview um with a guy named uh, nicholas kotar and he's a fantasy author he also has a podcast called in a certain kingdom and he uh he um so he he very much has an understanding of like story and and myth and fairy tales and like he he translates slavic and russian fairy tales um for his podcast and then mm. he, he reads them aloud mm. and uh, my kids really like it actually it, it, i would recommend that podcast as well um but he he knows he, he like understands it, like he knows the beats. And like, one of the things he said to me about it is, you know, these are tried and true like points that you can play with and you don't have to have it be the same thing every time in the same way that the hero's journey is not the same every mm. time, you know, it, it's, it, you, you can play around with them and you can add in like there's a, a book by C.S. Lewis called like Till We Have Faces and it's um it's the one that J.R.R. Tolkien liked the most of Lewis's work mm-hmm. and there's a there's a bit in it where like you you see the main character she actually goes on a double journey on a hero's journey and a heroine's journey she does both so like I mean it's so complex you could even have have both of them in there, you know, which you'd have to be really good with C.S. Lewis was, you know, but, but so, so it, it's something that like, it's, I guess I'm sort of doing that whole like return to the classics, but like it's learning the, from the ways of old, what was, what was done then um, for storytelling yeah. and like, do it now. You can, 
Yeah, it's really it's really difficult because I feel like we've lost such a connection. Well, and culture really tries to break down this idea of the masculine and the feminine and say, oh, none of it matters. It's all on a spectrum, and you know, it's it's we we all make it up. And um, on a certain level, I think some of that is true, but on a, a deeper level, I think that's an oversimplification and and using uh, certain examples to make the rule for everything. And I just don't. I, I can't, I can't buy it in in the full sense, but in that same breath, like, well, I don't really know as a modern person, what it actually means to <laughs> be a woman and, and what it is to be feminine, because in my own life, I see the diversity of what that is. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, outside of certain things, but, um, we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, there's that, there's that complication of like, well, um, how do we even know what a, a female story is anymore? And there's certainly the question, does it exist? But I think it does exist um, because we see what men are drawn to, like what men watch. And um, it, it tends to be more of the the action movies and and the, you know, <laughs> the gun shooting and call to adventure. And then you, mm -hmm. and then you see what women are drawn to and uh, we're far more drawn to human beings mm -hmm. and their, their, their intimate stories. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I definitely think there's some uh, women out there doing really well with, with some of those things, or at least they, they have been. Like, I think Greta Gerwig does a fantastic job of, like, telling female mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, she's she has this way of, like, finding the complexity in, um, I think, the state in which women are in now, where we do feel she, uh, find ourselves in does these she do little little women the latest mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah she yeah. also did like ladybird um oh yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah i watched that one yeah. she's she's got a the barbie movie coming out soon so i don't oh, know how that's gonna be well but... <laughs> we'll, we'll see yeah. the I female mean, journey the heroine's uh, journey there uh, well i thought little women I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought that film was beautiful. I love the no, way- No, I love, I actually really liked it. it. It's probably because of some of the things that were changed, updated for modern audiences, but I, I don't mind- but she's, she's, telling a, she's telling a traditional story for a modern audience. And so if you don't find a way to um, connect with that in some way, you're, you are going to lose a bunch of people. There's a um, way to do it and there's a way not to do it. I, I sure. do think you can- I think you can, because that's one of the things is like, well, it's up, updated for modern audiences to relate, which is one of the, like, what is it? Like, I think that that's one of the reasons why for like, say, Amazon's Rings of Power, like, mm -hmm. that's how not to update something for sure. modern audiences. <laughs> sure, sure. That's how not but, to. But that. So, because you can't do a, like a, a, oh, you can or you can't, like, you know, there's a way usually to do it. Yeah, but that I think with the rings of power and I haven't watched all of it. I've just watched pieces and I have a, That's I have a husband who's to. very upset about it. <laughs> good, good. As he should be. Um, <laughs> you it, know but, my position now. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh no, it, my sister's calling me. I'm so sorry. I declined it. Sorry. <laughs> um, but it seems like there, um, what was happening for the adoption of modern audiences was a, a really large reshift and refocus of the symbolism and the the participation of mm -hmm. uh, things from the original story to now, and a lot of that sort of having to do with like the light versus the dark and all of those things. Whereas I think yeah, yes, they they really like yeah, they messed that up with um, when you don't is so it when you stand for nothing, you fall for anything kind of like it's like oh, touch the darkness like that was the theme. Yeah, and um, I, I didn't want, I didn't watch it all, and I don't want to give any. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I've only watched, I only watched like a couple episodes, and like that's the I first. That's think... within the first fifteen minutes. Is like you've got to touch the darkness. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, so, sorry, I don't that's remember it. I don't remember it. That no, no, well. it's, at no probably wasn't it's at the end. It's at the end. Yeah, <laughs> no, it isn't. Well, well, the theme that that this is a really good example of like, you know how with. Lord of the Rings with Frodo, how he's given that vial of Gal from Galadriel with the mm -hmm. light of their of Arendil. Like it's the it's the thing that gets him and Sam through their darkest moment, which is with yeah. the spider in, yes. in the lair. Yeah. Exactly. And and so 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 that's like 
that piece is so deeply symbolic. And I think yeah. also Tolkien hated spiders, but, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. And, um, and so, but for this, the, again, the opening scenes and mind you, sorry, it was, you're correct. It wasn't said. It comes in the later. Beginning. It was whispered. And then yes. we find late at the end of that episode, what it was he said. And it's like, this is the, th like, to me, that was like, this is what she's going to be doing the entire, like, this is the thesis statement of this series. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sometimes you have to touch the, the darkness to know which is up or down, basically. And uh -huh. like, you know, that's not actually the, the ideal in no. our epic stories. Like actually, yeah. even even if you go and then mind you, you could be like, oh, what about like you know the pagan stories that are not Christ centered? Because it's a very you know Tolkien being a Christian, like it's a very yes Christ centered ish, even though it wasn't an allegory, but it's like the good you know. But even in the Iliad, the bit that is the climax is King Priam going to Achilles, begging for his son's body. Mm -hmm. so he could give it a proper barely burial like mm -hmm. that's like holding the light in the darkness yes like that it, it's 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 it is it's it, even though it's not any way a christian story at all because it's also pre-christian but like there's some there's a glimmer of like this have pity on me give me mercy like give me something in the the depths of my despair even though you're my enemy yeah. and see that something we don't see in like rings of power so that's one of the reasons why like some people were like don't be so harsh on it like where's your christian love and tolkien community i'm so disappointed in you and i'm like you know what yeah people can be harsh and i understand fandoms can be really like it can get n quite negative quite quickly when you deviate from source material but there's a reason there's a point there's a reason why people get so upset because the, the source material is so beloved and it did it, it did it well and so and, and yeah. that's why you they missed like I, honestly like amazon i don't want to just hate on it just to hate on it <laughs> amazon missed a huge opportunity to tell like a meaningful story i needed closure from this so i spoke with um richard roland who is a tolkien he's like a he's a german philologist which is the same job tolkien was and so i asked him to I'm like hey can you can you like give me your version if you were given a billion dollars from Amazon? <laughs> can you tell me what you would, you know? And so he he gave me that and I, and I don't even, I have to remind myself of all the things, but like that's my like, okay, I'm pretending this happens. This story is what I think it should have been. You know, I just needed, cause I, it, they didn't do a good job of like, <sighs> Tolkien's story connects with our generation and many generations before and it yeah. will after. Like I read it to my kids. We took two and a half years from The Hobbit to Return of the King. And we read the whole thing. And then we watched all of the Jackson films and it was glorious. Anyway, but but it's it's kind of the story of our time. I don't, and I know I'm a, a big fan. And so I'm all like, yeah, Lord of the Rings. But there's a reason why it's huge mm -hmm. because it touches something deep within us. And there's mostly male characters in there. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You know what I mean? For me as a woman, like I can connect with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely, I think, a mischaracterization. And I actually think women are better at this than men, mostly because I think in general, we, we do have a fascination with human beings, but there's this, this idea that if someone, if you don't see someone on the screen who looks exactly like you, then you're, you're not going to be able to connect with it. And um, mm -hmm. that's where some of this like diversity stuff comes in, where they want to have that representation. So more people can feel this connection in this deep, sorry, this yeah. deep meaningful thing. But yeah, I think, um, I think we're missing the point of the fact that like we can learn so much from humans. Like we need both male and female stories. And like there's, um, <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of complexity in the the male stories that you see in Lord of the Rings. Also, it's not like every man is the same. In fact, right. you get a lot of like the best and the worst of men and uh, hobbits. <laughs> um, but like <laughs> you, you get these different sort of like views of humanity and the way that they cap like capture people. And there, there's something um, very interesting about, um, yeah, the, the deep characters that 
we're driven in those films. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think sometimes we, it felt, feels phoned in to uh, tell a story we think people want to hear. That's the, and that is like, that is exactly the problem. I, I know for Disney with Star Wars, they did like all these focus groups. They hadn't even written the whole thing all three films like they did the first one and then they changed like they would see what people they thought people wanted and then they would change it like that's something that you like, like you can't do that if you're going to tell a story you've got to have it not to say that you can't be like influenced by but you can't let the mob be like oh you guys oh, want this yeah. you want this and yeah so so I think that we don't know what we want when we when we're talking about stories but we know it when we see it and there are things, there are ways to do, like what you're saying about, um, you know, we don't have to check off boxes. They might be checked off accidentally. Like it's, it, it that's, that's fine. If, and you just know if it's a good story or not Yeah. Um, with everything everywhere all at once. But like with regards to um, the diversity thing, I do think that this is the problem with, with film as a medium, mm -hmm. because we, if you're if you're talking about on stage, like for example, say with Hamilton, that that's great. I like. I mean, I know that you're a Hamilton fan as well. Like it, it, it's, but the way that they did artistic license to switch things around, yeah. and, you know, that is is so perfect for such a thing because it lends itself to like the suspension of disbelief is is bigger for the stage, and you also can be like, oh yeah, so they race swapped everybody. And, and they did it in a style that of, of, of musically that suits these people. Yeah. And that's great. And that, and that, and it spoke to, has spoken to so many people. In film, there's a sort of a, a realism that is very difficult to get away from. But I think if you stylize it enough, yeah, I it, think you could do it, but you have to be purposeful. It, it really depends on what you're trying to make, right? Like when you're looking at period pieces, does it make sense to de like um, deviate from what was historically accurate there? Probably not. But if we're talking about like a super absurdist, hyper, you know. Well, even um, Romeo and Juliet with, uh, from I think that was Baz Luhrmann, right? And mm -hmm. he made it in modern time um, and it worked really well. Um, but but you, there's a sort of like, you can't, you can't, say oh well we're, we're we're not sorry no you can't if you, if you want to do a good job if you want to race swaps characters from source material from because i've thought a lot about this it's like why why am i what what do i want to see what do i want to understand like you know like like logic doesn't go away when we're it's like why do people in this secluded village why are they all it's not cosmopolitan why is there different races in this small secluded village? It's not a cosmopolitan city. Like it doesn't make sense, some of this stuff. So, no, but if yeah. you want to do that, make it. So my, my, my point is make it so that it's not, att don't attempt realism then. Make it highly stylized in the way that maybe like a, a play would be. That's, that's my solution to that. Yeah, but even that people have problems with, right? Because you look at Disney movies um, these are cartoons. They're highly stylized. They're, you know, they've got music and people are mad because there's a black mermaid, right? Like, and I, I understand why people are annoyed, right? Because it feels like it's not, it feels, it feels political, right? I don't care. Like, I don't care what color the mermaid is. <laughs> like the, the, the fact that we're fighting this, you know, is to me, like you can have the conversation, but like, for me, I would rather have things make sense in the stories. If you're going to tell the stories, have it make yes, sense with them. <laughs> yes, as long as you haven't had any yet. <laughs> okay, bye. Um, no, for me, it's like, can we ground this in something that makes sense? And like, I look at Hamilton, nobody cared that they race swaps, but it made sense with the style and what they did. Yeah. But yeah. if you like, you know, you talk about... Um, I've heard people talk about it. Like if you took Princess and the Frog and you made that uh, a white woman, there would be outrage in the streets. And yeah, like- Same with Black Panther and- Yes, yeah. but in some senses, it's like, but 
is it with those stories, is there something about that time and that place that the race mattered? And for those two, it, that's probably true. Yeah. If you're talking about New Orleans in the, what was it, the 20s? 20s, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and the, the way that they told the story, I, I, I would understand why people would feel like that was weird. <laughs> but, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's, um, and like there's, there is certainly, um, there's certainly history to take account for where there was a lot of discrimination and personal uh, purposeful uh, non-inclusion of minorities, um, including Asian Americans, Blacks, Absolutely, what have yeah. you, right? And so this is where this movement is coming from as a response to this. Mm-hmm. But that comes with its own complications because then instead of not seeing anybody for their race and for the color of their skin, um, we're looking for specific colors of skin that are mm-hmm. different than what we were looking at a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it seems like the same problem. You're just flipping it. Yeah, and, and it's yeah. probably in some ways more well-intended in the sense of like, we want to recognize the humanity of these people versus uh, discouraging the humanity <laughs> of seeing human mm-hmm. humanity of, of this other group. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still, it still has a little bit of a problem where it, instead of as Martin Luther King wanted us to not being defined by the color of our skin, we are, we are more hypersensitive to it than ever before. And that's the, th- that's the same it's sort of it's sort of the same issue in the different versions of it with regards to like we don't really know how to portray heroic stories for women yeah for like the diverse cast like it's like that's why i i would say like i really enjoyed everything everywhere all at once because it it did that and it I, i wasn't thinking these are Asian Americans, you know, I wasn't thinking that, but it was present and it made sense in the story. And, but it, I, I'm just saying, I think more of that because um, it, it, it can resonate to so many different, on so many different levels with so many different people. It, it's, but it's very difficult to do again, because we don't really like the stories that, that resonate with us that resonated with our like say ancestors they weren't made up in the sense of like I'm writing a story and I'm coming up with it it was they were just always there they were morphed in different tribes coming together and then became something different and incorporating different this and that and the other there's actually in um a book called uh, the discarded image by C.S. Lewis he talks about People in medieval times actually would have been like, why would you need new stories? Like just the ones we have are great. <laughs> Again, I'm not necessarily agreeing with them, but well, there's something about, what, what, what were you saying? We think ancient people are stupid. Well, that's the, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's, maybe we need to start having more. And, and then this is what Tolkien, how he looks at the past is like a great age that we are coming down from the age of men is a decline, you know? And um, and I don't necessarily agree a hundred percent, but I mean, you know, it's kind of it's kind of biblically accurate accurate as well. But but it but it is it is giving respect to, I mean, obviously there are horrific things from the past that sure. we don't want anymore, but sure. maybe they're it's like they weren't dummies and they were super intensely connected with one another. Um, there were issues. I don't want to like romanticize the, the past, yeah. but I do think that there is ancient wisdom that should not be jettisoned, like baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah, well, it's... in our stories that you know we could benefit from looking, looking behind. Yeah, well, if we if the story, our new stories are not new. <laughs> Nothing is new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we are constantly inspired and uh, drawing from the thing that came before us. But when we have this 
attitude that, well, we know the ancient people, they were medieval, they were barbaric. We they don't, were dum-dums. We, we don't want to turn back time. We, we lose sight and we cut ourselves off from the stream that our water source is coming from. And mm. maybe that'll flow for a while, but if you don't, if you keep the flow plugged up, the waters will run dry. And mm. yeah, we can, we can acknowledge it's a yes. And we can acknowledge that there were things in the past that were not good and should not be continued on. And there was, um, lots of, lots of ancient stories and ancient practices that, um, nobody wants to continue yet to say that there isn't any truth to any of these ancient stories and they don't have anything to teach us about what it is to be human is, uh, I think a grave mistake. I completely agree. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Well, and the, the thing that helps me, and I, I made a little video about this, about it, it's not going to be forever. I mean, it might, we might not see the change in our lifetimes, but the, the space that we're in now in film um, it's, it's the, a deconstruction. And I didn't mm -hmm. come up with this. This is from Nicholas Kotar. He told me that. So I'm like, okay, I believe you. Cause I see it. <laughs> I see what he's talking about. It's a period of deconstruction where we're trying to like, actually like, you know, like this, the story of Shrek, like, you know, that's, that's a deconstruction of the fairy tale. Yeah. And, and we don't, we, oh, that's how they, how, that's how the fairy tale should always be. And it's like, oh, oh no. There's a nuance here where you deconstruct it, but if you keep on doing it, it actually doesn't work. Like sometimes there are places for deconstruction, sure. but it's that it worked well for that, but you can't keep doing that. Yeah. It's going to unravel everything. And yeah, it's, it, it's like what I say about religious deconstruction, right? Like sometimes there are times when you're faced with a machine that is clanking <laughs> mm. or, you know, a, a lifestyle or a worldview that feels like it has cracks and you can go on and you can hear the clanking and you can see the cracks and just pretend like they don't exist, but you know, and, and maybe it'll all be fine <laughs> or maybe down the line, things will continue to crack and crumble. And all of a sudden you're, you're kind of lost, you know, you don't know what to do. And so you're holding desperately to something or just throwing it all out. But, you know, there's, there's a point where um, sometimes re-examining and taking apart the thing that you hold, um, is, is helpful to uh, understand what is the problem here? Why, why do I have this tension within myself? Mm -hmm. Yet if we are just going to deconstruct, take the machine apart, throw the Forever pieces ever, around ever, the room, ever. yeah, leave it, leave it and, and, and just continually break it apart, um, we're left with nothing. Like at a certain point, you have to start building again, reconstructing, moving into this place where we can hopefully fix whatever the problem in the machine was. And sometimes we're going to have to look at a manual. Sometimes we can see it right away and pull, pull whatever, you know, thing is blocking the machine, you know, and obviously it's a little different when we're talking about belief systems and like <laughs> bigger questions, but that, that metaphor to me, um, it seems to make some sense of what I think people are trying to get at when they're talking about deconstructing and what mm -hmm. I certainly felt like when I was deconstructing where, you have this this frame and like there's questions in it and all of a sudden things that used to make sense don't make as much sense as before and you realize oh some of the things i did believe were wrong what do i do with that <laughs> mm -hmm. and um yeah i'm grateful i didn't get angry and leave the crumbled house crumbles mm -hmm. i'm glad i was able to realize hey this foundation is stronger than i thought but mm -hmm. um it certainly needs some <laughs> <laughs> some love and attention and reworking and, um, yes yes yeah mm -hmm. and that, that's what I feel with film like I I um man I've always loved film like it's there's something so beautiful the way the moving image can tell stories and like the way it connects us with people and um you know even even watching stories that um I don't think have the truest message. I can sometimes still find beauty in them or think they're really great stories, even if I disagree with them. Um, but I think the way that we watch films and consume films is more of the problem than the films itself. And then mm. when we're not good consumers, uh, we become <laughs> pretty lousy creators <laughs> and it creates mm. a this cycle where we're not being intentional. We're not um, 
truly trying to understand well what makes stories good and what connects it to us as humans and what things are we reflecting that are true Mm -hmm. and um how do we how do we put this all in a frame that uh starts um giving us light (laughs) and it's so funny that you said the the thing about the um like the light and the spider with uh Lord of the Rings because that's that's exactly what Faraday was talking about when he was when he was complaining about it to me (laughs) because it's the worst part of the whole yeah yeah they 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 got that completely wrong and um it's just so funny but like there's there's something like that where it's like why does the holding to the light when the darkness finds you why is that symbol so powerful because it resonates true for us in our real lives. Yeah, we're not facing giant venomous spiders trying to kill us, but what happens when you hit your deepest depressions? What happens when you find the darkest place? The things that get you out of it are not further participation with the darkness. It's mm-hmm. holding on to whatever light you can find and letting that be a reminder that this is not all there is. And um, yeah, I think I think we haven't thought through all of the narratives that we're telling ourselves are good or beautiful. We're forgetting what they were for. Like, because ancient peoples didn't have to stop and be like, what are our myths for? Like, they were actually just, again, participating in them. They were, they were living them in their everyday yeah. lives. And it was just part of their worldview. They didn't have a word for it because it was life. Yeah. And so for us, we are like, we need to be entertained. Entertain me. Entertain us. And, and are you not or like, feed me. I, I know. <laughs> I know. That's what, I mean, we're not so far off. Like, it, it's like, ah. Uh, I hope we're a little me. far off. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, have you seen the latest reality TV shows? Have you seen Milf Manor? You mean Milf Island? By Jack, by Jack, uh, what's his face? Oh. Gosh, no, that that's yeah. well, well, what was he from 30 Rock? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm, well, I'm letting Tina Fey down. <laughs> Al yeah. Yes, from 30 Rock. They made there's there's someone who made this joke. Um, like, uh, I don't know if you've watched 30 Rock, but I love 30 Rock. I um, haven't seen it. No, no, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I don't know. I think Tina Fey's hilarious, but no, um, I, I pro- it's one of those like I could probably watch it and like it, anyways. It's very absurdist, and like for me, um. It just and I, like my my uh, I had a friend who always joked because I would tell her oh I love Thirty Rock you should watch Thirty Rock and she started watching she's like Cassidy it's you <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's okay. I know <laughs> yeah okay what's um, the joke though what about Mel um, Island what? well he he there was this one episode where um they did this reality show called Milf Island where all of these boys like it was like Survivor but with like hot moms or whatever and it was like a joke and it was. Um, like it was like the the most popular television show, you know, on the planet or whatever, um, or like in the country or whatever. And then I think something something happened where it like had to get canceled. I can't quite remember the full storyline, but yeah. So okay, it was like, like it was this exaggeration of like oh Milf Island, and now it exists. <laughs> and I was gonna say like yeah, you know that it, it's Milf Manor is a show. Like it, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, horrible. And I I can't watch it. I'm just watching somebody review it. That's what I want. I, I'm like kind of doing a through through the lens of yeah, reality. Else. Man, reality TV show. Oh, I've like there's there's something so fascinating about the form of of how they change the way we see people and the way like if you really like analyze the form and um the the way that uh, an editing and a, a storyline constructed by producers can really affect the way that you see a person. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's very fascinating and like a huge ethical gray area. <laughs> and um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the reasons sorry. I don't like reality TV. Um, well, well, can I would love an experiment to be done where you edit somebody to be the hero and then you edit that same person to be the villain that would be very interesting as like a, I don't know, like I bet it could be done. And just to see like, I don't right. know, it would expose the dangers of, of such things. Well, and we, you, you talk about this in documentary filmmaking, right? Because you're, you're doing a similar thing where you're taking real people and real stories and mm. you're 
you're putting them on the screen to be consumed. And a lot of people, when they watch documentaries, they put on their documentary glasses and they go, um, everything I'm watching is real. Everything I'm watching is true. And, um, you know, that's that. Um, but you really start to think about it. Well, there's still a person behind these stories, creating these narratives, um, who's trying to tell you something, who's trying to give you an opinion about something. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is not a bad thing, but it's an incredibly powerful tool. And um, yeah, I think documentarians probably have more conversations about media ethics than narrative filmmakers because of the fact that you're you're taking real people's stories and putting them out to the world and that impact matters so desperately not just for like the social the way we look at social issues but the people you put on that camera mm -hmm. that people are watching and getting opinions about but yeah I took a documentary writing course in college and um, I remember watching this film and I can't remember what it was called it had like red fishes on the cover and it was about some like uh, city or so some yeah yeah some city or country uh, where the the political system was pretty corrupt or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they took this one political leader and um, it, he was awful. <laughs> he was just awful. And at the end of the film, the the teacher was asking us, okay, um, so what do you guys think? And Someone, I, I don't know who it was, but someone was saying, oh, that guy, who's the worst. And he's like, well, <laughs> we like, what? He's like, it's really easy to take the worst 12 things you've ever said, string them in a line and make someone look really terrible. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh yeah. <laughs> like if you took the 12 worst things I've ever done in my life mm -hmm. and you put that on a screen, I would lose yeah. all credibility mm -hmm. with anybody guarantee it <laughs> I don't have to question that mm -hmm. yeah and yeah I think that power and that recognition of that power um well it humbles you mm -hmm. but it also starts to make you realize the complexity of human beings and that's why I I tend to have a lot of compassion for reality tv stars and um mm, yeah yeah I I very much agree. you know yeah. I I mean, it's not really reality anymore. Like, I think people it never know, was. no, this isn't. Yeah. <laughs> never we, was. We were I mean, fooled at first with Survivor. Like, we're like, this is just that, you know, but then like, oh, no, no. no. Well, and like, I mean, there's certain things that are, that are real people and they are put in real situations. And as it goes on, as people understand the media more, the people on the screen are more in on it. But that was not the case. Um, uh even 20 like years 20 years ago it was it was not as it was not as sort of clear cut in the understanding of what's going on and what you're doing mm -hmm. um but but i think i think people have you know people aren't stupid <laughs> they right. start to recognize these patterns and realize oh the kardashians are are not you're not just catching them in these random things they create these stories and i, I mean it started yeah. with the hills right um oh yeah the well, Hills. I, I mean, I never watched that. I mean, I watched Survivor, but I didn't watch The Hills either. But it was it was this okay. big reality show on MTV, and I remember everybody kind of like it was so high production value, and like it, yeah, it was sort of like yeah, it felt like a weird soap opera, but like I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, the last episode, they pull the camera up, and you see that they're on some like uh, film lot, like an LA film lot. Oh. And it was sort of like a little like nod of like, yeah, the thing that you thought the whole time. Um, oh, <laughs> not that's not quite not quite the same. And then um, you know, as time gone on has gone on, a lot of the people from the hills have sort of told their story and say, Oh yeah, they told us to, you know, not like this person. And, you know, we had to deal with being the villains and all these things. And there's just all these complications of what goes behind the scenes and how it affects. It's like wrestling. It's like professional wrestling. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And that like, was the um, original reality TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you look at stuff like uh, The Bachelor mm. and The Bachelorette. And um, those things are very complicated. And like you can hear, and there, there, there's a lot of people who've talked about their experiences on those shows, and sort of 
the emotional uh the emotional highs that they got swept in to mm-hmm. and sort of the realization of some of these things where it was like I was buying like I think in the back of my head I knew I was sort of buying into this <laughs> this fake reality um yet like at the end there's like this this thing of winning and like yes I won it's not like oh I'm in love I get to be married it's like oh I won and it's like wow like it's it's like it's such a fascinating um I mean like there's certainly questions about it but like you put a bunch of people in a room uh one man bunch of women and vice versa and they're competing for the prize of this person no phones no internet (laughs) <laughs> you know, maybe you have some books or magazines and then copious amounts of alcohol. Oh yeah. Ply them with alcohol and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. It is far more morally ambiguous and m- morally wrong <laughs> than um, we fully want to admit. But oh, I'll women admit get, but yeah. women get drawn into it and they yeah. love it. And you know, there's, there's this acknowledgement they know it's not fully real because how many of those relationships actually ended up in marriage? Less than I five, know. but. Okay, so then- I just have to say the only um, reality TV show that I really got swept into was A Sister Wives. So that's the only one. <laughs> Apparently there's only what? one left and the other three are, are divorcing him. So. What just was your draw then to Sister Wives? I was like, what? How? I, mm. I was, it was the sort of like, the, this the is intrigue. so, yes, opposite of me mm-hmm. um, and our culture. And you live in our culture, like you live, like they moved to Vegas. They were mm-hmm. in Salt Lake. Um, but yeah, the, I, I was like, how are you here living? Mm-hmm. And how women, how do you handle this and they all have all these kids well that's that well and again i think there's a reason women like reality tv because it's about people yeah so you're drawn into these stories of people who are other whether it's yeah john and kate plus eight or uh you know sister wives or um little house whatever the the one with the um what's the what's the politically correct term? Big family or, <laughs> yes, family yes. or something big world I don't know big world something yeah. like that where it's like oh yeah. these these people who have these interesting lives that are different than ours like mm-hmm. and there's this sort of movement especially with TLC shows or they're just like us or you oh know, that's okay okay sorry I just realized there's totally reality tv I watched but it's it's the like the how the home like like home uh, decorating which is yeah, also the home ones or the, 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 the love <laughs> it or list it or the um I don't know where they choose house like, hunters which one. house hunter yeah 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 or in house hunters international yeah I totally forgot about those but I a hundred percent this is this was back when I used to uh go to um my my in-laws and the kids were little what not and I would wear. just like go to the basement and yeah yeah that too <laughs> and I would just watch like the like oh, better home and garden channel or whatever mm-hmm. and it would always be the the home improvement, home, like homes on homes, like the guy, like it would just always be, yeah, like, like house house stuff and and, and then yeah. whatnot to her as well. So not quite as much the drama, drama, drama ones as yeah. much for me. Well, there's it was more like those reality ones are the ones I was more drawn to. Well, there's different forms of reality TV now. You've got like the, um, <laughs> more snacks. Um, okay. Okay, let Isaiah choose a, choose one, and I'll be done soon. Okay. Is it just what one? One of the movies, what like on Disney it? Channel. Oh, here's the thing. It says slow internet, or sorry, no internet. It says no internet. Okay, then just turn off the TV, and you can find something to eat if you want, and I'll be done in like ten <laughs> minutes. What? Andrea's okay. home drama. <laughs> this is our I, own reality show. You're saying the internet? <laughs> I know. I was like, hey, this is my children and me and my life. Um. <laughs> I mean, like they're they're trying their best not to interrupt me, but they're like, but the TV's not working. I don't know. Apparently, the internet. I'm hogging it, kids. Yeah. Right now, here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah so well, yeah, I, it, it's funny that I discounted those. I'm like, that's not. But it kind of is. It is, but there's different forms, right? So there's the yeah. um, 
there's like the they're just like you or like you know or oh these crazy experiences of like trying to look at a person who's other and find their life Mm -hmm. and that's like tlc's bread and butter Mm -hmm. and then you've got the competition shows and those range from like survivor you know greatest race the bachelor bake off america's next i'm yes great british bake off and so you have all of these layers and, and different things within those and then you have like the the value add home in like mm-hmm. home mm-hmm. shows like home improvement mm-hmm. shows and like house hunters and um I, you could probably even put like uh what is it intervention in one of those mm. you know where it's like we're trying to help people or improve something and you learn something through that oh like oh um, what not to wear is kind of that yes it's like the and there's usually tears like yes, oh I, tears. I haven't tried since i had kids like you know i just I shouldn't, I'm not making fun of them. I, I probably would. I love that show. Too. I, you know. Yeah. No, but, I did. No, I did. I, I, I got a lot of tips from Stacy. But... <laughs> I mean, there's something fun about, you know, um, in, engaging with people and watching those things. But mm-hmm. again, they come with their own complications and they, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's different ranges of those, but when you're representing real people as people, um, mm. There are questions as a creator and ethical decisions you have to make there. And then there are questions as a consumer. And like, if you don't think that in some of these competition shows, they purposely put people, they say, oh, we do, we do background checks. We do, um, you know, we provide therapy sessions to make sure everybody's stable. Mm -hmm. If you don't think they purposely put people who they think are going to create drama and not represent themselves the best way because it's going to be great TV. You're you're Mm -hmm. fooling yourself. And I think, I think that's real. I think that's uh, a really dangerous game to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't even talked about like YouTube channels. Well, new media. It's just us. We're, we're, we're just talking. It's yes. New media. Yeah. New media makes it so different. Well, Mm -hmm. here's the thing. Um, and what you learn, what well, I think what you learn in film school, but particularly if you go down a documentary route, the minute you put a camera in a situation, you have changed the game. You are not yourself. I mean, okay. Okay. Let me tell you, actually, no, this is a really good example. I, so I had my coffee. I would have brought my little cookie to dip and eat it, but I didn't because I'm like, oh, well it's filmed. But if we were just talking without the camera, I would have. You could have done it. I would have silly. I could have, but there is like. But, but that's the thing. Something we, about like. But yeah, again, continue. There's, like there's something. There's something different too. Not only have we had the camera in front of us, but then we hit record. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. we hadn't hit record, yeah, you'd be sitting there with your cookie and you'd be eating. My cookie, and, and it was delicious. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. mind you watching me too. But there's, there's something about that way we filter ourselves and it's not always a bad thing. I think there's certainly Mm -hmm. times and places for things like the conversation that I have, um, with my husband at the dinner table is not always the thing that I'm going to put on the internet, even though Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my husband Mm -hmm. at the dinner table (laughs) and I put Mm -hmm. it on the internet, but it's, it's, Mm -hmm. there's different, there's different forms and there's different places and some things are more appropriate than others. (laughs) Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give five. Right, we can wrap up in five minutes. We're yes, good yeah, for we can do that. Yeah. Hey, bud, what's up? Um, mommy. Yeah. Why don't we play video games? Um, I guess you can for the next few minutes. Yeah. Okay, bye. Actually, he was pretty quick. But yeah, I probably <laughs> the frequency I think of yeah. the. The, the interruptions the are going to get it's going to get worse. It is lunchtime for them. So, yeah, I probably should. Uh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do a, a five um, minute wrap up. Yeah, but yeah, I think, uh, I mean, kind of to wrap all of this up, like when we when we look at reality TV shows, we can almost get more of the sense and have those questions about how it actually affects human beings and, and the way we see the world. But these narrative pieces do that as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes in a more powerful way because we don't think about them as real. We we kind of they're more than real, as Jordan Peterson would say. <laughs> they're more than true. Yeah, <laughs> which gets complicated. I don't. Whatever me. Whatever you said that, five. You said five minutes. <laughs> don't give me started I know, on I know. more I'm than so real. <laughs> I mean, so like, let's just do this in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. 
Well, I think that's where I, I really start to get these questions about the masculine and the feminine in um, films, because I think that question for me is something I haven't settled. Like, what does it really mean to masculine and feminine? And like, I have a, I have an intuitive sense about those things, but um, how to put that in words and, and how to know how true that intuitive sense is. I, I don't know how to do that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm slowly pacing through it and I'm working that out, but it's interesting to see you on that journey of like trying to do the same thing. And you certainly come mm -hmm. at it from a slightly different perspective than I do. Cause I, I actually do think you are more feminine. than. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like yeah. in, I mean, we're, we're both equally female. In, in, no, in yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, in the way I do think that you, you sort of, yeah, yeah. Like you've, you've described this to me before for you, like you, just the way that you engage with the world, there's like, there's a space there. And ugh, I don't want to offend people. Like, it's like a, I'm, I don't know, you're very like logical and methodical in the way that you sort of go through things, at least from what I'm, I see. Maybe that's be. not true. I'm, I can am, be. I am such a walking contradiction. Like there's a side of me that is very logical and methodical and, and drawn back. Yet there is another side, and I would say probably a more powerful side. Um, but I, I I tend to keep it in check more, especially when I'm on the internet. But like mm -hmm. incredibly emotional and incredibly like driven by people and very compassionate. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. um, those are all things I I tend to see as more feminine. Um, so typically, so so when you're talking, yeah. So and but on the typical. Like, I agree with regards to, like, I mean, I engage, like, in some of the, like, again, like, I'm, like, hey, superhero films, yeah, like, that's a more masculine <laughs> side of me, sure, that, but, sure. but I'm very, I'm, I'm well, you're very not... sensitive, yeah. I, like, that's a very feminine, well, yeah, and you you're, know? like, the vintage clothing, and the, like, the, yes, it's, the aesthetic yeah, very process, traditionally, yeah, not something yeah. I'm interested, in. I like, I like things right. I like, but I don't wear yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't, know how to do my hair like I yeah, yeah, yeah. I dress um I, I kind of dress like a hippie <laughs> but yeah um, well I mean like that's a this is a boho like but yeah I do sorry, I, yeah. I, I know what you mean yeah 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 it's and that's something that well and that's one of the things that I do appreciate about your friendship because it does bring different things that I don't that I don't see and like, like what you're kind of I think getting at for what you're saying for for me from the different angles that we come at that at the feminine yeah. well and I I think for me uh, like I think I get the older I get the more agreeable I'm becoming but I'm I don't think I'm an agreeable person and I do think I, I'm a very agreeable person yes I don't like conflict <laughs> well I don't I don't think I like conflict but I no no not to I say you do yeah, no I don't sorry I, no I don't think most people do but like I, I recognize like the place for it and like I would rather have the conflict and have it out yeah. than the sort of passive aggressiveness that often happens within female groups yeah which is why it I, depends I, for me it, dep it just it just depends. depends on the, yeah. <laughs> so it's always a it's a spectrum yes and it, I I'm definitely more disagreeable than some of my friends who I I know if I didn't say anything, it'll never, never get it. So I, I, yeah. I do see that, that there's, but I do think but that like, you're a little bit like I, direct for certain things. Like I, uh, well, I was talking to Faraday, it's like, I'm more aggressive than he is, which mm. is generally mm -hmm. a masculine trait. Like I was making yeah, a yeah. joke where it's like, you know, I don't have to worry like about uh, <laughs> certain abuses because I, I have probably have the tendency to be more of that than you do. Not that either yeah, of us yeah. are, but like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, if anybody's going to be more aggressive, it's probably me. Yeah. You're like, and, watch um, out. good thing. You're how many inches taller than me? 30 yeah. But like, that's the thing. Like he would, well, no, we don't have to get into that, but yeah, 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 yeah. but like, that's yeah. the thing. There's like certain things where like, I do think I have, um, you know, more masculine qualities. And so I, I think that's where I have the struggle of, of being a woman especially like mm. growing up in churches mm. where, you know, there was a certain type of like femininity that was called for or, or, you know, uh, yes, uh, appealed to and it, it, like expressed. And I never felt fully that. So ironically, I never did either, even mm. though like we're talking like, Oh, I'm like, I, I mean, so clearly with my vintage, like clothing and all that, it's hyper feminine, but I mean, I'm not, I, I, to near. Like I'm not no. quiet. <laughs> no, I'm not like, like, like we, even though we are different, but we both have that level of like, I am going to be outgoing and say the things I think without yeah. really holding much back. And that's a non 
feminine thing. Well, I was talking to Hezzy the other day and he was sort of talking about uh, women in, in the, the Discord space. And uh, <laughs> my, I promise I will wrap this up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like my point was, I don't think any woman who lasts in this space is hyper feminine. Like, I think there has to be some tend towards these masculine qualities to make Mm -hmm. them stick Mm -hmm. it out because it is a very masculine space. So Mm -hmm. it's not to say that you're the most feminine person. Right. Yeah. yeah, You know, I know, but I think on the range of like women in this space, you tend towards the more feminine side. And I would say I'm probably somewhere in the middle, but definitely more on the masculine end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, and it's no, it's been very good for me to like one of the things I that like I mean you could say like your husband Faraday helped me to sort of understand and also just because of the sense of humor of people from Holland and like that area in the Netherlands and and just the Nordic countries you know and I think I've told you this before but like just for our audience you need to hear this so that 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 sort of like uh joking around like razzing like the fellas uh-huh. yeah when you come into this space and participate in the masculine you kind of have to be okay with having that thrown at you yeah and but but mind you I've had it thrown at me where I'm like I don't know you and that's mean <laughs> but you've got to have a rapport which is where you know look for again I, I'm be I, I am a woman in the space but like as long as there's a bit of a nod like a little like you know like the, for me I needed yeah I, I needed it to like because he and he will for him his version of that to help me kind of like be okay in this space was um was telling me directly yeah. hey so this is actually what how my humor works and most people from where I'm from this is like you don't compliment people ever yeah. it's like you know, and, and so he just, he just told me outright and, and, and he, um, calls, he calls me an idiot more than he tells me he loves me, but oh! you know, they mean the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, but like, and honestly, like, I would be like, can you like be sweet to me, please? Like that, that's me, like for you, but that works for you guys, because I, I think that that's yeah. the rapport. You know? yeah. But in, in the, in the buddy, buddy space, like it helped me to see, but again, that doesn't mean that I'm like, if I'm on the discord and people like, oh, I'm going to come on and like raz Andrea and like give her all this a hard time. I know thanks like I I have to know you and like have a rapport where I actually trust that you do like me yeah. like I, I I believed that Faraday did like me and I didn't believe that he was being unkind yeah. and I, I actually do have experienced that like oh I just kind of feel like you're mean like fr- yeah. from the discord as well and maybe they didn't mean to but that like it's a very like and that's in the masculine space in the feminine space it's even like not worse, but like you don't do that first of all. But it's you like would never, so. Under- you would never go to a a female brunch and call one of your friends fat, right? No. <laughs> oh, you sure you should be getting that? Really? That's a large question. Like, but even like, like, but even as a joke, like, even if you're like. Yeah. Oh, French fries. Oh, you're so fat. Like that's very offensive no. to women. Right. But like, I, yeah. I would not be offended to be like, oh yeah. Like th- that's just the difference in me. And again, I think it comes from a lot of different things, but yeah. there's something yeah. about that where it's like a man can say, oh, you know, like I- I've been to, <laughs> I've been to, you know, uh, barbecues and stuff and they pat my husband's stomach and go, oh, you gain away, huh? And it's like, <laughs> it's man thinking, I don't know. But you couldn't do that to I a woman. I would die. <laughs> no, and, it, well, and that's why, again, like, I love that we're kind of ending on like this, the, these sort of sex differences and tendencies because that's what, it, okay, so let's let's take that and let's, you could do a comedy or you could do it in like a drama or in, like you could do different versions of that, but in in story, that's why men and women are different. That's why we need to show different journeys for them yeah. because you resonate. It resonates in different ways, but yes. the truth of the ultimate on both ends can be something that you relate to on either end. And so, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I think that, and, and I think that it's good to embrace like, oh, the, the again, learning that like, oh, the, the feminine and the masculine that we participate in both. They're, they're two That's sides. why we should- Yes, it's, it's a, a two it sides is a of point. the de- yeah, there's two of sides of the divine. 
right? Like right. masculine and feminine so, are these representations of something higher. And so higher. And, and then when we have stories, we, we participate in both and yeah. this is good. It's a good thing. And, and, and yeah, so I, so ultimately I do hope to see better stories. I don't know if we'll see it, like I said, in our lifetime, but I will, I mean, I, I, I love to see the good ones when it does happen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, a diamond in the rough it's like oh there was a good one in this age of deconstruction yay you know so that's yeah that's the, ultimately that's what I'm trying to like look for and see and seize is like oh this is something that can be a good one yeah. that we can look to and and that brings us up higher like higher than reality tv yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, content creation film is a very new medium in the in the realm of arts so I don't think it's over uh, it's mm -hmm. really in a growing stage. No. I don't think we've seen that. Growing pains. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. This was so nice. Thank you for inviting me back on. I really enjoyed it. Of course. I, I'm glad you're having or I'm glad you wanted to come back and I'm I'm glad your <laughs> kids made a made an appearance. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They it was an emergency. They were hungry. They had to. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will close the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 